capital punishment, although not on the statute books in the UK since 1965, played a large part in the British judicial system for centuries. Considered a punishment as well as a deterrent, the death penalty in Britain was conducted publicly in many places around the country. However, one particular place, a village just on the outskirts of the old London city boundaries, became synonymous with capital punishment. For the best part of a thousand years, the area hosted brutal public executions upon the gallows known as the Tree at Tyburn or the Tyburn Tree. Looking at Tyburn today, on the end of Oxford Street and Edgware Road, the area would be considered central London. This makes it hard to believe that Tyburn was once a little village recorded in the Doomsday Book in 1086, although at the time capital punishment had been outlawed by William the Conqueror, instead preferring to disfigure criminals to act as a living reminder of the King's wrath. Intersecting two Roman roads, as can be seen on a contemporary map, see how they are some of the only straight roads in London. The village of Tyburn took its name from a local brook. Henry I in 1108 brought back the death penalty and it's believed around this time Tyburn had been the preferred site for unofficial and unrecorded executions. The village would carry on to play a role in the capital punishment history of London, with Tyburn's first recorded execution in 1196 of William Fitz Osbert, one of the leaders of the ill-fated 1196 revolt. Osbert was hanged by the stream at Tyburn, only after being dragged naked behind a horse through the London streets. The design of the gallows used in the early years of Tyburn has been lost to history. However, in 1220, Henry III ordered a pair of replacements showing that Tyburn had been used for enough executions to warrant an upgrade. The Tyburn saw continued use for public executions, with Henry VIII ordering the execution of some of the leaders of the Pilgrimage of Grace, which was a popular uprising against Henry's reformation of the church in 1537. In 1571, Tyburn received another revamp with the construction of the infamous tree. The tree was a triple-sided gallows capable of hanging multiple people at once. The tree consisted of a horizontal wooden triangle supported by three legs, giving it the name the Three-Legged Mare. As London started to build out to the west, the Tyburn Triple Tree became a landmark, being at the increasingly busy junction of Edgware Road and Oxford Street and Bayswater Road. It became the first site of London for many newcomers to the city. If that's not good advertising for a holiday destination, I don't know what is. The first victim of the tree was treason convict Dr John Storey, a Roman Catholic. The tree became the main execution site for Londoners, drawing massive crowds on execution day. Trials usually took place at the Old Bailey. After a guilty verdict, the prisoner could expect between two weeks and four months from sentencing to execution. For most of Tyburn's history, murderers were treated the same. However, in 1752, they had to be hanged within two days of sentencing, unless the second day fell on a Sunday. Because of this, judges usually sentenced on a Friday, so then they could give the condemned an extra day. The process of public execution started several days before the condemned was set to hang. If they were one of the unlucky 40% not to receive a pardon from a capital offence, the criminal would spend their last days at Newgate Prison. The process would be marked with religious ceremony. The Sunday before would have a sermon held at Newgate Chapel, and the night before would hold a service at St. Sepula without Newgate, where verses would be recited for the condemned. When the execution date arrived, the prisoner would be handed over in the morning to the under-sheriff at Newgate Prison. At this time, the handcuffs and leg irons were removed to be replaced by rope tied around the wrist. Crowds would gather outside the prison, awaiting the sound of the bell of St. Secular, which would only ring on execution days. The day itself was seen as a public holiday for the working classes, and because of this, crowds would amass throughout London. Once the handover was complete, the condemned would be put into the back of a horse-drawn cart for the journey to Tyburn. On a map, Newgate to Tyburn isn't a massive distance as it can be walked in under an hour. However, on execution days, the journey could take upwards of three hours. This was due to the numbers of public spectators lining the procession route as it passed through Holborn, St Giles and the Tyburn Road, now known as Oxford Street. En route, the condemned were allowed to enter some drinking establishments to take the edge off their impending demise. It wasn't uncommon for the condemned to attend the gallows completely drunk and often disorderly. On journeys, the condemned had to ride sat on their own coffin with the prison chaplain and of all people, the hangman. Behind the cart followed a troop of soldiers and behind them, a posse of constables, all for in case the prisoner had arranged one last attempt at freedom. To make a pass for the procession, officers led the convoy pushing back crowds who tried to get one last look at the condemned. Once arriving at the tree, the prisoner was allowed to make a speech, 
often the final words would be admitting guilt and offering their soul to God. Many of the political prisoners used this as one last chance to inform about their beliefs and the reason why the government had sent them to the tree. This is the early origins of Speaker's Corner, but we'll touch on that later. Due to hangings being a citywide event, front row seats were sold to the highest bidder. Crowds would amass around a junction at Tyburn and almost a party atmosphere would ensue, with various vendors and street traders selling their wares. The convicted person would be expected to wear their best clothes and the crowd would often jeer saying, put on a good show or have a good death. Any signs of fear or nerves at the sight of the gallows would invoke abuse and insults from the audience. When the time had arrived, the condemned had the noose placed around his or her neck and her mate to stand in the cart, at which the cart was led away leaving the prisoner hanging. Unlike the long drop hanging that became the standard for British executions later in the mid 19th century, the short drop at Tyburn caused a slow and painful death of strangulation and in some cases took upwards of 20 minutes for the condemned to die. The tree saw some celebrities hang from the neck, for example Francis Derham, whom was hung, drawn and quartered for a sexual relationship with Catherine Howard before she became Henry VIII's fifth queen. Robert Hubert, who falsely confessed to starting the Great Fire of London in 1666, and rather bizarrely Oliver Cromwell. Well that's odd you might think, as Oliver Cromwell died from suspected septa senior. Well, this is true, but after his death, Cromwell's body was exhumed and posthumously hung for treason. After his hanging, his head went on an odd journey. I know someone who's done a video on that. You should check it out. Tyburn became burned into the Londoner's psyche. Many laws had hanging as a punishment, meaning that the average person could end up at Tyburn. In the face of this, the London population joked and had sayings about the tree. For example, doing the Tyburn jig, take a ride to Tyburn, and the hangman got the name the Lord Mayor of Tyburn. The three-legged mule stayed on the site of Tyburn between 1571 and 1759, albeit with minor repairs here and there. It was decided after several acts of vandalism in October 1759 to replace the permanent structure with a movable gallows. Tyburn's use of the execution site only lasted until 1783 with the execution of highwayman John Austin, after which a new site at Newgate Prison was used. Tyburn after 1783 would still attract crowds, however not for the gruesome acts of watching a person hang from the neck, but instead listen to a person exchange beliefs and views. You see, many of the political prisoners use their last moments on earth to try and convince the public that they had given their life for a noble cause. The last human dignity given to a condemned person is their right to say what they want as their last words. And this became the seed of freedom of speech as we know it. Even though death had left Tyburn, the place had become synonymous with the freedom to express your view and as such Speaker's Corner became the legacy of Tyburn that we still see today. On any Sunday of the year you can go to Marble Art, which was installed there in the 1850s, to hear speakers on the corner, a place where Marx and Lenin both explain their views to the world. Although Tyburn has left a cultural legacy on London, there's only a stone marker of the site of the tree left, and a shrine to the martyrs at Tyburn. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. As, as always, please like, comment, subscribe, share, and don't forget to click the bell to keep yourself updated with all plainly difficult videos. All that's left to say is thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.